I'll just check that we've got the back in here. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Planning Committee. My name is Councillor Anita Leach and I am the Chair of the Committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the Committee runs smoothly having regard to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain who the rest of the people on the tables here tonight are, to my immediate right is the Councillor Solicitor, who will give advice to the Committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the Councillor's Planning Officers, Highway Engineer and Environmental Health Officer, who will present the applications this evening and give any technical advice to the Committee which may be sought. The rest of the people who you see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this evening and make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualifying petition signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak on behalf of the residents. However, once the board councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that may follow by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee, who will then make a decision on the application. If a site visit is requested and approved by the committee, then that matter will not be discussed this evening and will be discussed at a subsequent meeting. If, when we announce the uh, site visits, if people would like to leave, they're free to do so. But likewise, if you want to stay, you're more than welcome to stay. Okay, committee, could I ask you to approve the minutes on pages 1 to 16? Yeah, Thank you. We have apologies from uh, Denise Reilly, who's just returned from holiday and unfortunately is poorly. Are there any declarations of interest? Chair, uh, item 16, uh, uh, prejudicial interest as uh, I'm a board director of the Chair's Okay, we come on to agenda item 3, request for site visits. Um, I'd like to request um, a free committee site visit for an application, um, Land to Arrow Park Upton, application 01261. This is a major application which I think will be worth um, the committee seeing. Um, it is to come to the design of the committee, but I'd like to, uh, to do the, um, the site visit when we do all the site visits from this committee, if that's okay. Any others? Uh, just please, uh, Chair. Um, item 12. A site visit. The committee did one that was the enclosure of the garden that's been taken into somebody's use there. And there's concern locally about loss of immediate value and also sight lines due to the enclosure of the site. This is a really interesting site. Thank you, David. Any others? I think um, I'd like to request a site visit, please, Chair, for agenda item number 10 on the grounds, which is uh, 78 Dorston Road, Hessel, on the grounds of the size and cumulative massing of the dwelling will be out of character with the surrounding area and constitute a development. Okay, I have actually been requested by the officers to defer that item, Cathy. Um, so um, if we can just take that, that item's going to be deferred up, um, unless we want to do the site visit first, do we? No, okay. Okay, well, there, there may not be a need for a site visit once we've actually gone through, but we are going to uh, defer that item if that's okay. Yeah, item 10. And I might as well tell you at the same time that we're also going to do the item 40, which is 50 Edgerton Road. Right. Okay. Any other side visits? Okay. I need some. Can I ask two side visits? One on number 9 um, on the ground to work for development. And one on number 11 uh, due to the 
Ian Hunt. Okay, thank you. Any others? Okay, so if I can just uh, make uh, everybody aware of what is happening now. Um, we're going to have a site visit on Agenda Item 9. We are deferring Agenda Item 10. We're going to have a site visit on Agenda Item 11. A site visit on Agenda Item 12. And we are going to defer Agenda Item 14. <coughs> Yes, can I just get approval of, of the committee for the site visits? Thank you. Okay, if we can move to agenda item 4, which is the application to 11 Seabank Road, Egremont. Could we have a presentation, please? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. This application is refer to the planning committee to the qualifying petition and the agent of SDA Architects who is an elected member of the council. The main objections to this application can summarised as the proposal will increase the number of properties in multiple occupation which will have a negative impact on the area. There could be 14 people living in this property and the impact on the area through the increase in traffic and parking. The application property is detached and located in a designated residential area the end of a row of residential properties. It's a public car park with garages to the rear of the property. The property was originally a six-bed family home that was later occupied by an HMO for six residents. The applicant has now applied for planning permission to increase the number of occupiers to seven. Internal alterations have taken place to increase the number of bedrooms to seven and to provide two combined kitchen and living areas on the ground and second floor. The only external alterations are the provision of two dorms at the rear of the the, on the rear elevation. The application has been assessed against Unitary Development Plan Policy CH14, which allows for the conversion of existing properties to multi-occupation, providing that the property is of sufficient size to accommodate the proposal. It does not bring about a change in the character of the area, and it will not result in concentration of properties in multiple occupancy. The area is predominantly residential in character and on this part of Seabank Road. A number of properties along King Street have been converted to HMOs, however the main character of the area around the, around the application site is considered to be one of family dwellings and self-contained flats. It's considered that the pro proposed standard of accommodation is satisfactory with each bedroom um, containing an ensuite. There's little external alteration to the property and there is sufficient capacity within the facility to accommodate the increased parking. For these reasons, it's considered that the proposal meets the policy requirements and will not have a detrimental impact on the character of the area. For these reasons, the application is recommended for removal subject to the tax conditions. Thank you. Um, can I just ask if there is a board council that would like to speak on this at all? Have a qualified petition in relation to this item. Uh, would the lead petition like to come forward? Um, so we don't have a ward council either. Can I open this up to committee, please, for debate? David? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, for those of us who went on the site visit, this uh, development looks very nice. It has been built to an exceedingly high standard, uh, high quality. Um, my concern that I registered on the day, I'm told off, but I was told off, my mum was told off, the fact that it didn't appear to have two exits, it just appeared to have a one front entrance. And in fact, I don't think Paul Doughty, who was at the meeting, realised himself that the building actually had two exits to it, which obviously makes it a lot better. The other problem being that the exit is from the kitchen area. Having put all that on one side, from a planning perspective, I think it's a very nice development, it looks very nice. Um, and I will reserve my powder, if you like, to hear what other people have to say. I thought it was a very attractive, positive, and decent development. My only concern for access and escape in the fire. Trina? Thanks, Chair. Yeah, I agree with Councillor Allison. I do believe it was uh, to built to a really high uh, specification. Um, it was already multiple occupancy, um, I understand. Um, I, oh, I don't have no objection. Yeah, you did say about the fire exit. Um, Chair, did you get any more information on that? 
Um, I, I think uh, Councillor Alderson did raise objections uh, following this light visit. There was some correspondence that uh, went backwards and forwards between uh, the developer and uh, Councillor Alderson, and Councillor Alderson, as he said, is now satisfied that there are two exits. Thank you. Thank you. Steve? Um, I, I do take very uh, close notice of those who go on the site visit. The two pieces of evidence I've heard uh, seem very positive, so um, in the absence of I'm not hearing anyone else, I will move that if be approved. No, I can't do Thank you for that, Steve. It is an Thank you, Kathy Seppender. Okay, all those in favour of approving? That's unanimous, that's carried. Thank you. If we could go to agenda item 5, please, on page 23, could we have a presentation, please? <coughs> Thank you, Chair. This application has been taken out of delegation at the request of Councillor Fraser. In addition, there are two qualifying petitions containing a total of 187 signatures and 46 individual letters of objection. The main objections can be summarised as overdevelopment of the site, access to the site is inadequate, surface water flood risk, loss of green space and trees, increase in noise and disturbance, loss of walkway to Liso Road, overlooking and loss of privacy. This is an outline application of all matters reserved for the erection of 10 dwellings and an access road through the site. And the predicted layout shows a mix of seven detached and two school properties and a bungalow. The site is within a designated primarily residential area and is currently a mix of grazing land with a large area given over the storage containers and various outbuildings. A previous scheme of 16 houses on the site was refused and subsequently dismissed at appeal. There were there were two main reasons for refuse on the previous application, and these related to highway safety issues and the quantum and scale of the proposed development. It's considered that its current proposals can overcome previous objections to, to the previous scheme by utilising a single road through the site which will integrate well with the surrounding development by reinforcing connections. The submitted drawings identify pedestrian um, and cycle access onto Liso Road, which will ensure the site is permeable from west to east. The scale and layout of a number of dwellings is commensurate with the surrounding development and all the required interface distances can be met. Although in outline, the indicative elevations exhibit a, a certain architectural quality and detailing. In further addressing the inspector's previous concerns with the earlier scheme, the proposed layout is not confined to the southern part of the plot. A high volume of objections relate to the increase in traffic, parking and possible congestion that such a proposal will bring, particularly in relation to the close proximity of Greenies Primary School. The Head of Traffic and Transportation has raised no objection to the proposal, subject to the submission of details for the access as any part of any future reserve matters application. Objections have also been received in relation to flood risk, loss of trees and wildlife. The Lead Local Flood Authority has raised, raised no obje objections to the proposal, subject to the conditions attached to the late list related to a scheme of surface water drainage to be agreed. The applicant has also proposed a landscaped wooded area within the scheme and the reduction in the number of dwellings will allow for a better landscaping of the area. It is therefore considered that this proposal meets the requirements for both national and local plan policy with particular reference to UDP policy HS4, together with the redu reduction of the previous number of dwellings it now addresses the pre previous concerns of the development on this site. The application is therefore recommended for approval subject to the attached conditions plus those on the late list and the section 106 for affordable housing. Um, the proposed condition on condition 12 on the late list should also include some additional word, wording after um, development. It should also say, and details of any necessary um, noise insulation should be approved in writing by the local planning authority. The proposal is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you. We do have a qualified petition on this. In fact, we have two. Um, are both lead petitioners here to speak on this? And the lead petitioners don't wish to speak. Okay, would you like to speak to the board councillors? Yes, please. Would you like to come forward? <coughs> if you could just state the name for the honour. Uh, Lady Fraser, Councillor for Morrissey Ward. 
Um, firstly, I'd like to thank the Chair and those members of the Planning Committee and Council officers who attended the recent site visit. <coughs> As you know, this application should have been heard in October. However, the request for a site visit put it back to this evening. The late lists for both meetings have requested amended conditions. A scheme for the provision and implementation for the discharge of surface water from the site, which has just been mentioned. A noise survey and a detailed construction environment management plan. I've looked at the list of objections in the last few days from residents. And each of the above issues that were on the late list were raised and submitted by them uh, as objections. Clearly, the issues were not addressed in the original report before you, which recommends approval. This does seem rather remiss, and if the meeting had gone ahead, if this application had gone ahead in October, then those recommendations wouldn't have been advised. A site visit is for members of the committee. The reality of seeing an area for yourself rather than a drawing. It's not for officers to realise that they may have missed residents' concerns and then add it to the late list. I have concerns that they did not make an informed decision when they came to the conclusion to approve. Moving on from the site visit, the access to the proposed development would be via Greenies Close, which is actually at the top of the map for those that didn't attend. There. There's a very small estate that you can't see. This entrance is exceptionally narrow, with Greenleaf Primary School situated at the entrance. The junction including the area in and around Greenleaf Primary School and those houses nearby are subject to gridlock during school starting and finishing times. The problems will be exacerbated due to the increased traffic by this proposed application. The previous application which was submitted and recommended for refusal by officers was for 16 houses which was also refused by this committee and was subsequently refused on appeal for the following reasons. The proposed development would significantly increase the movements along a stretch of shared surface to the south, southernmost end of Greenleaf's close with limited visibility and increase the likelihood of conflict between pedestrians and vehicles on the shared surface, which would be detrimental to highway safety. The proposal would generate additional traffic fronting Greenies Primary School, where there is existing significant parking and vehicle movement in the vicinity of the school during the morning and afternoon, with the potential to impact on highway safety and congestion outside the school and at adjacent crossroads with Greenies Road and Bayswater Road. The congestion of the school during early and closing times has to be seen to be believed. And amongst the many officers who have visited, I went along with uh, David Ball, who's here tonight, and it's not an exaggeration to say that he was horrified by the number of drivers who were blatantly doing their own thing to get in and out of the narrow cul-de-sac entrance. In fact, one driver shouted, um, well, David, uh, David and I, we must look like council officers. Why don't you do something about this and make people take more care? And he then added, that includes me as well, but I can get away with it. It makes life easy. <coughs> I believe David has since contacted highways about the problems. However, this is not unusual, but it's something that local residents have to deal with on a daily basis. This would be made worse by any extra houses being built, albeit the number is reduced from 16 to 10. The narrow access to the estate, which restricts access to the proposed development, also impacts on emergency vehicles. There are a number of examples of this, but not long ago, uh, an ambulance took some time to reach a particular house because it was school closing time, and they did say that um, there was no way they could sort of charge their way through when it's uh, children, young children. And it's not just cars, many bus, buses deliver and collect children during the day, sometimes coaches which also prevent people leaving and exiting the road. The safety of our children is paramount, and next week I'm meeting a mother to discuss road safety around the school. A little boy was knocked down outside Greenies and is quite frankly lucky to be alive. The 10 additional proposed homes would be at the very least increase the number of cars going exiting this area from 10 to at least 10 or 15. In the previous
this application of 16 houses, the proposed road on that bit of outlined land up there was straight. And officers believe, highway officers believe this would cause cars to drive too fast. And this new application, they, the road isn't straight, it's got a curve or a bend or whatever you call it, um, which actually isn't shown on the diagram. It's now deemed to be safe because of this bend um, and that there won't be speeding traffic and accidents won't happen or congestion. Clearly, in reality, this won't be the case. <coughs> The applicant's highways assessment technical note states that the independent traffic count survey took place in 2014. This report was submitted with the previous application which was refused by this committee and on appeal. It would appear that the same report is being used for this application with only the number of dwellings changing from 16 to 10. So I don't believe that the traffic issues for this application have been resolved. There's an unadopted footpath that runs along the rear of the back gardens of houses in Green East Coast which would be affected. Residents have had access to the footpath via a pre-existing gate for over 20 years plus. Residents use this gate to gain access to maintain fencing and hedges and for keeping the footpath clear. To my knowledge, this it has been an unadopted footpath from at least 1981. Residents have a right to this immunity due to the length of time they have legally had access. The site backs onto homes in Green Leeds Close. Residents at Pleasant enjoy light, peace, quiet, and a little noise disturbance. All these attributes would be eroded if such a development was to be built on the site. A comment was made at the site visit that the six foot wooden fence, which isn't a gate, it's a fence, there's no opening, was put there for any future further development. This isn't the case. Normally, when a group of houses are built, and I've come to the end of what I'm going to say, so. Um, normally when a group of houses are built on a specific piece of land, the pavement, so the first 1.8 metres, is used for services. However, when the present Greenlease estate was built <coughs> over 20 years ago, it was built under the Section 38 Adoption Agreement. This meant that it was unnecessary for pavements or footways to be constructed as there were service verges which complied with those government guidelines at the time, which means if you walk around the estate, you'll get a, a short stretch of what looks like a bit of pavement, but it isn't. It's a bit like some of these very small cycle paths you get, which is sort of clear. But this was the way it was built at the time. It was within, within all the criteria. I believe that when the present estate was built, it was not envisaged, envisaged that a phase two development would proceed, otherwise they wouldn't have built it under this um, section 38. And that's why there is no pavement and this so-called access goes nowhere. It is certainly not the temporary access it is claimed to be by the applicants. I would request that the planning committee refuse this application for the reasons I have given and also under UDP policy HS4. As I said previously, I don't believe that the traffic issues have been met or the concerns of residents have been dealt with. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fraser. Um, can I just ask uh, if you can comment on the two comments made by Council Fraser regarding the bend in the road, because I'm not familiar with that as part of this drawing, and also uh, in relation to the unadopted footpath being affected, please. Thank you, through you, Chair. <coughs> I agree with Council
there's a reduction in um, down to 10 units and um, has removed the secondary vehicle access onto the Eastover Road, which I was uh, concerned about. And also provides for a suitable method of traffic calming on the access road rather than the, um, the, the unsuitable one that was shown on the previous application. As, um, as um, Councillor Fraser said, the previous application went to appeal. Um, and the inspector, the, the only primary issue that the inspector commented on was the method of traffic calming on the proposed road. He didn't comment on the uh, volume of traffic um, and he didn't comment on the uh, proposal for a secondary vehicle access on Toliso Road. So with the alterations to the proposed method of traffic calming on the um, access road, I'm satisfied that the applicant has, has dealt with the issues that were raised by the uh, inspector. And as I say, uh, they've also dealt with the issues that I raised on the previous side. Thank you. Can I this up to committee? Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Chair. It was a very informative site visit. I, I listened to the comments from the ward councillor. I read the report from the previous application where it went through. Uh, and I can only concur with the uh, network traffic manager the, the application as it is in front of us at the moment actually <coughs> ticks every box that we refused on that particular time. So they've gone away, looked at it properly, done the homework, and come back with an application that I would find very, very hard to actually refuse. Uh, I looked at the whole situation in relation to uh, access for the site itself. Uh, one of the main points is, it's been mentioned, passing the school. Uh, when we were on the site visit, we did entrance uh, the site at the bottom of uh, Lisa Road and I made a comment at the time whether the development of the site could take place through that particular access but make sure it was closed once most of the development was finished. I think that was beneficial to everybody. I think those points have been taken up in the extra conditions that are on the, on the report uh, saying say that the conditions for noise etc. It's usually when the development is taking place but not when it's finished. So I think all those things have been addressed properly and uh, I find no reason I want to go easy. David? Yep, um, thank you, Chair. As one of those who went on the side visit, as the uh, Mitchell did, um, I felt it was overdevelopment in quite a lot. It looked as though they were trying to cram too much onto that site. And I was very, very concerned about the access for the construction, which of course has now been overcome in terms of the additional conditions. I'm not entirely happy with it, to be quite honest, but as David says, I think it's probably addressed all the technical issues <coughs> that would give us um, sustainable reasons for refusal. I'm not happy with it. I think, it's, I, think I don't like the, the whole concept of it to me is wrong. And in all fairness, I can't think of a sustainable reason for coming up for refusal. I'm just not happy with it. Irene? <laughs> This is, this is an outline.
The officer's recommendation is to approve this application subject to the conditions listed and also the additional condition on the late list. Do we, uh, uh, do we have a move for that? Thank you, Dave. Second that? Thank you, Trina. All those in favour of approval? Against? That's carried. Thank you. Can we move to agenda item 6, which is pages 33 to 40? Can we have a presentation, please? Policy HS5 says new development 
will be subject to controls over density and layout as set down in the policy. And the reasons why these controls are needed over and above those for other residential areas are explained in the UDP's reason justification. This says that the new development offers a challenge to the existing character of the listed older established residential areas, of which this is one. It says that guidelines are long established and have been successful in controlling new and converted houses by retaining the best property as far as possible. And by preserving the spaces between the buildings. It says that gate and zone two consists of large family houses set in extensive, well-treated grounds with strong boundaries. It says that new development should reflect this character in density and sighting, and it's also further advice on the gating guidelines is contained in the supplementary planning guidance note six. Supplementary guidance says new dwelling should be set back at least 19 metres from the front of the plot and proposals for the new development should make provision for the retention of a substantial, substantial belt of trees adjoining the highway and this should be supplemented by additional tree planting. The front of the application site which faces Dawson Road is most important from the point of view of the guidance. The proposed house would not be within not 19 metres as per the guidance but just half a metre from the front of the plot facing Dawson Road. Clean and clearly, there will be no opportunity for a belt of trees or any landscaping between the proposed dwelling and Dawson Road. The garden currently stands between the existing inset development and the highway. It provides separation and conformity with the guidelines and that would be lost. It would be replaced by a proposed dwelling which would be fully exposed to the highway. The proposed development would be in conflict with the policy and harmful to the character of the area. As well as providing separation between the existing infill development and Dawson Road, the gardens, trees and shrubs provided screening. While there remain trees and shrubs between the highway and the front house, regrettably, the shrubs and trees on the application site, including those covered by TPOs, have been removed. The officer report says that the removal of protected trees from the site is being investigated. And we would wish to see this loss remedied. The lost trees are important to the landscaping of the existing insect development. That's a bit there. The officer's report identifies an exist, existing approval for a two-story extension to the one map. This would extend about 3.8 metres in the direction of the proposed dwelling. One the map is just to the southeast of the application site. This extension, which will be extended beyond the presented landscaping and called loss of some existing landscaping, when combined with the proposed extension, would add to the impact on the proposed development of the character of the area. This is just an additional factor, and as I explained previously, the proposed dwelling on its own would be harmful to the character of the area. Whereas the plot fronts Dawson Road, the proposed dwelling has been positioned to present its principal elevation facing east towards the map at the junction with Dawson Road. Here again, the 19 metre setback is far from being met. The maximum distance from the house to this boundary it's just a little over nine metres at the furthest point. And the south elevation also faces the map, and it's between this side of the house and the map that plans show up space marked parking. The dwelling is so close to the map that a car cannot be fitted end on to the house. Finally, Chair, this plot in this location is simply too small. Policy HS5 Power 5 says in this zone, density should be as a maximum of 7.5 dwellings per i.e. three per acre. You get around 40 plots on this size per HA. I understand that under current government policy, density guidelines may not carry the same weight. However, these figures illustrate the inconsistency of the character which the council's policy set out to defend. And this is existing tiny plots which simply continue to provide a separation of the existing development from the highway and enable it to continue to meet the design guidelines. This is an area which the council has identified as needing particular protection. The characters of this area is addressed by the guidance. It identifies how it should be protected. And this proposal is totally out of character with the area and in conflict with the guidance. And I would ask permission to be reviewed. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Councillor Hodgson. Um, can I just ask, based on Councillor Hodgson's comments regarding um, the uh, boundary distances, <coughs> could I just 
ask for some clarification on that, please. The, the distance of the proposed dwelling to the um, edge of the road. The council referred to um, supplementary, sorry, supplementary plan note six, which means 90 meters, 90 meters. It doesn't meet that requirement. No, it's, it's much less than 90 meters. It's comparable with the um, dwellings next door and the garage or up building to number one than that. Thank you. Can I open this up to committee? Through you, Chair. Um, Councillor Hodson alluded to the fact that uh, number one than that have planned permission to increase in size by 25 to 30%. Um, could the officer advise me whether or not the separation distances would still be met? if number one is increased by that amount of size. I'm not sure the position of the extension on number one and that. Yeah, I, I think we're probably talking about two separate applications, <coughs> Kathy, we need to just focus on this. Well, well, yes, we are, but the point is, if the extension to number one was completed before the building on this small piece of land was erected, would the separation distances that have been presumably approved still be within the separation, the guidelines of separation distances? I don't think the officers are in a position to answer that question. I'm not, I'm sorry. I mean, I can tell you the distance of the proposed way we've gone, um, number one, that now, and if it's... But I don't know, but that's not going to help, that's not going to answer your question, I'm sorry. Okay, I think we've already been told by the officers that, um, as outlined by Councillor Hobson, it doesn't meet the 19 metres that was outlined uh, anyway, <coughs> Kathy. Um, despite the fact that it is in line with um, adjacent properties. Um, are you happy with that? Yes. Okay, any other comments? Trina? Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I attended the site <coughs> visit. Um, I have no objection to this, I uh, agree with this. Um, it is within keeping of appearance of existing dwellings. Um, you know, they're all a mix of size, scale and design. Um, and I have, you know, it's not overlooked. Even the existing sandstone wall, I um, believe, will be maintained. And, and yeah, I just think it is, it is within keeping of the appearance of uh, existing dwellings and I have no problem with this application. Thank you. David? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, as one well, also who went on the site visit, all I would say, having known the area for quite a while, it is totally out of character with the rest of the properties there, uh, and I think it is cramped in terms of going on that particular site. The other point that's worth it, probably to use my little pen, but uh, if you look on the chart there behind you, you'll see the actual garden in the separation between that and the rest of the house where the house is proposed, by a significant amount. So the house, in fact, is cramped its location on that area. There's a good view, that house is a lot higher than it, it looks right over it, but that's not a problem. But the whole concept of that entrance to the nap, in my opinion, is compromised badly by the uh, existence, or the proposed existence and construction of this particular dwelling. So I'd like to hear what anybody else has to say, but I have got a reason for refusal, which I think would be appropriate to share under the circumstances. Let other people have a go. David, could I just ask you to shout your pen on where number one is so that everybody can understand that? <laughs> number one is down here, and of course that is the house that's likely to be extended by that amount. At this distance, I can't hold it steady, I'm not suffering from anything in the way of insurance. But that's the house that in fact owns that piece of land. Okay?